There's a famous story that's told throughout Dublin about the Oozle Galley ship and the story goes like this. In 1695, a ship set sail from Dublin Harbour for the Levant, which is out beyond the Mediterranean. And the ship was filled with Irish goods for sale. So it's filled with um, hides and skins and salted beef and the kind of things that they would have exported in 17th century Dublin. So the ship runs into trouble in the Mediterranean when it's overtaken by a crowd of pirates who seize the ship and very unusually for pirates they decide that they're going to keep all of the ship's crew alive and they're going to make them work the ship and back in dublin they don't know what's happened to the ship the ship doesn't return and the ship owners are very concerned so they decide that the ship is lost and after several years they put in for the insurance on the ship which is paid out and all of a sudden a couple of years later completely unexpected the ship returns to Dublin in the meantime what's happened is that the men who were on board the ship and who had been working the ship on behalf of the pirates overpowered the pirates gained control once more of their ship and sailed it back to Dublin and so it arrived off the Liffey and this shocks everybody because these men are believed to be dead and the ship is believed to be lost and not only does it shock um, Ferris uh, Twig and Cash who had owned the ship but of course it shocks um, the relatives of these men particularly their wives many of whom had thought that their husbands were dead had remarried and now had new children or had had affairs and now had new children there's a very popular expression in Dublin called oozler and an oozler is a child who is believed to have to not be his father's or to not look like his father and it comes out of this idea of the men of the Uzal Galley returning to these new children. Um, this creates a huge problem though in Dublin because while you might think well these men return with the ship and the pirate bounty is theirs, the men who'd paid out in the insurance all of a sudden claim they own the ship, they own the pirate booty. The men who used to own the ship, Ferris, Twig and Cash, claim that they own the pirate booty and so this starts a big legal case in the courts of Dublin, um, whether it's owned by uh, the insurers, by the original owners, or by uh, those who'd managed to escape from the pirates. And the problem is that in Dublin, um, and in Ireland, there's no proper arbitration laws. And so this case drags on and on without any arbitration. And it looks like very quickly, it's gonna suck up all of the money that would have been raised if these goods had been sold. And so a group of merchants in the city came together and decided that the best way to settle this case was through arbitration by all of the parties sitting down together and deciding um, what the best deal was. Um, they did this and ultimately they, de they decided that the best thing to do was to sell the ship, to sell the pirate booty and to give all of the proceeds to the poor of Dublin. And this was so successful and it was so popular that they established the Oozle Galley Society. These merchants volunteer to um, give their um, arbitration skills and they charge a small fee and this fee is then given to the poor of Dublin and it becomes almost a charity. Um, this society becomes hugely popular. It lasts right up until the late 19th century. And men from the Oozle Galley Society also established the Chamber of Commerce in Dublin. And this is why the two bodies are so closely related. I've had a look into the Oozle Galley Society as part of my research. And the earliest written records that I can find of the society existing dates to the 1740s. And this is about 35 years after the ship was said to have returned. Um, from the Levant with all of this pirate booty on board. There is no mention in the early records of this fantastic story. It seems like an amazing story to overlook and to not talk about. In fact, the first written record that I can find is over a hundred years later. And that mentions the ship going missing, but nothing about these fantastic pirates. The earliest mention I can find of the pirates comes 150 years later. And it's very linked with the publication of a story called The Lost Ship or the Oozle Galley Society by W.H. Kingston who'd heard the story in Dublin 
And this is a very long account of the bravery of the men who were captured by these pirates, who were kept on board alive and who finally managed to overpower these evil pirates and bring their ship back to Dublin to return gloriously to their family. Personally, I believe this is a fantastic Dublin folk story and it's born out of the vivid imagination of Dubliners rather than being a historically accurate event that ever took place.